Hello chess friends and welcome to the Zadov Chess Channel and welcome to a very special game that I prepared for you today. It's a brilliant game played by the top engine Lila C0 against another top engine Stove Fleece from the computer Blitz Chess Championship in 2022. In my opinion, this is one of the best games that I've seen in my life. I'm not sure how to explain you what's going on on the board because this is simply such brutal and sick chess. Uh, in one particular moment, even a bishop will be stronger than a queen and the rook. I'm not sure, uh, as I said, how to explain you. Be prepared, as I always like to say, put your seat belts on and uh, just enjoy this brilliant and brutal brutal chess game so here lila c0 with the white pieces uh played the move e4 still plays responsible uh, e6 the french we have d4 and after move d5 we have knight to c3 we have now the so-called pulse variation and after d takes e4 we have now this rubenstein variation knight to e4 we have now bishop to d7 and now after move knight to f3 we have now the so-called fort knox variation uh which is i think uh, maybe not the best of moves that you can play so this was still pre-arranged by the organizer the fort knox variation it's sort of idea to at least liberate your light square bishop without weakening the pawn structure with the move b6 because many times uh, in the french defense you're trying b6 c5 then you even develop your bishop on b7 or a6 you're trying maybe even to trade it off but you have problems uh, that's the most important thing i think to notice in french defense you have problems uh, with the light for bishop so that's why in the fort knox variation you're playing okay once twice with the same piece in the opening you're breaking a little bit the basic principles of openings but at least now the bishop is out and uh, you have uh in a couple more moves so you can play knight to d7 knight to f6 still develop your powerful bishop maybe somewhere here to e7 so at least you're bringing your pieces on natural squares but okay uh here i'm not the favorite of it because uh, many times uh you okay you're staying on this diagonal but this bishop can be also an object of your opponent's attack with c4 d5 uh, it can be a huge huge positional problem but okay here the pre-arranged line, line was bishop to d3 knight to d7 and after casting the pre-arranged line and that was the last pre-arranged move by the organizer was the move bishop to e4 so it's again maybe not the best of lines uh, that black can play black can play of course normal development with knight to f6 uh, challenging the knight bishop to e7 and casting but okay here bishop to e4 uh, that's not the point of this game it's not a uh, really brilliant theory that they have to play but uh, you be be prepared as i said this is simply brutal, brutal what's going on now from this point on so now for move bishop to e4 uh, we have now bishop to e4 by lila c0 uh, stufle is played now the move c6 whenever you give up of course uh, your bishop for a knight then you have to secure the squares that the bishop covered so in this particular scenario it was of course the light square bishop that covered many many light squares on the board so now it's time to protect your light squares with the pawns that's not the optimal of course thing that you want to get because what you would love of course to get is maybe some kind of a setup now knight to f6 and then knight to d5 that would be a beautiful in compact position on light squares although you gave up your light square bishop but the problem is now the knight cannot stay there forever on d5 so it can be always kicked away with a potential c4 move that that are the things that i always think about when i uh, when i give up a bishop for a knight can I can secure really a compact position? In my opinion, black cannot secure a compact position. So that's why this uh, trade of uh, trade of bishop for knight is actually a bad continuation for black. So here after move c6, so as I said, black is at least trying to protect the light squares as much as it, it can. So here c4 immediately by Lila c0. We have knight to f6, bishop to c2. We don't want to give up, of course, from white's perspective, our beautiful bishop here. Now the bishops are aiming towards the king side, and we're waiting now black to castle then even h4 h5 maybe our opportunity is knight to g5 queen to f3 rook to e1 so white will i think find a beautiful beautiful setup for sure so bishop to d6 play by uh still flates we have bishop to d2 we have now a5 we have a3 the we have a king side casting and now g3 this move is very important because you understand now why queen to c7 was played by still flates and what you don't want to allow here is maybe this move bishop to f4 bishop to f4 would be a liberating line i think for black and whenever you play with the bishop pair against the bishop and the knight you want first of all what you don't want to get is that your opponent 
trade off one of their bishops you have to stay as much as you can with the bishop pair on the board and the cool part about this position is that the pawn structure is asymmetrical if the pawn structure would be symmetrical what i mean about it if maybe here it would be maybe a situation four uh, versus four on the king side and maybe three versus three on the queen side uh, then uh, you cannot really create some madness in the center of the boards but this is an optimal i think uh pawn structure for the bishop pair where uh, you can push pawns where you can open files open diagonals when you uh, can create an open position that's the most important thing for the bishop pair so after move queen to c7 we have queen to e2 connecting the rooks a very important stage of course of the opening we have a rook from f to e8 then now rook to e1 here by lila t0 and now a4 um, e5 is of course not an option immediately you may think that there are maybe some tactics on the e file but actually you get this one c5 uh, would be then a beautiful counter attack here for uh, for white even if you open the e-file that's not the point because here you get of course c takes d6 uh, is uh, grabbing the bishop comes also with the counter attack against the queen so black is simply losing a minor piece that's not good of course so here after move rook to e1 we have a4 so as we said black is trying to keep the game as compact as possible so that's why this a4 uh, idea is of course a paralyzing move not allowing here maybe white to make further progress with the move b4 then of course white would have a dominant position on the queen side too white has already a dominant position on the king side because the pop uh, the pieces are aiming on the uh, king side if you allow your opponent then also to have the uh, the advantage on the queen side then you're basically out of game for sure so that's why at least here souffles is trying some kind of a paralyzing situation on the queen side where you don't have worry so much on the queen side and now you're trying uh, to get back to the king side, king side and defend also that side of the board so here rook from uh, a to d1 very important move because uh, this is simple rule of dynamic chess so whenever you feel that the position could get open whenever you feel that the position can explode it's time to regroup it's time to put your pieces towards the center as much as you can because if for instance this center opens then you want to have your of course a rook on the d file you want to have your uh, rook on the e file you want the queen uh, have centralized you want your pieces have centralized so that's why very very nice setup here by lila c0 so g6 uh, we have uh, h4 very important move because uh, what we want to get also maybe is an h5 move uh, h5 would of course undermine uh here this beautiful pawn chain that black is here and of course we want to do that from white perspective because our bishops are very very dangerous but g6 also is um uh, is weakening the dark squares but so far i think black doesn't have dark square problems because of this uh potential bit maneuver of the bishop bishop to f8 bishop to g7 so still the dark squares can be protected uh here by black so c5 here by um so place we have bishop to c3 and now after move h5 we have knight to g5 of course uh, lila c0 uses now this moment immediately because now this knight cannot be kicked away anymore by the h6 uh, by the move h6 because black has already advanced the pawn to h5 and now you can get what's the problem here the problem is now with the move h5 okay you have stopped the potential h5 move of white but uh there are simply not too many weaknesses i think here the pawn chain has to be broken somewhere you see the queen is there the rook is there the bishop is there the knight is there the knight and the bishop and all of the pieces are simply attacking this pawn chain that black is building and uh, this pawn chain should probably explode somewhere so here in the continuation we have c takes d4 rook to d4 we have bishop to e5 and from this point on as i said put your seat belts on now really really wild things will happen so okay here lila c0 if of course retreats then bishop to c3 will happen and of course you have a messed up pawn structure suddenly it's not a good position anymore knight to c5 will happen b6 and black would have a cemented position that's a position that black would love to get for sure but here after move bishop to e5 lila c0 sacrifice first the rook for the for the knight the rook takes a d7 and the problem is now if you play uh, here knight to d7 of course you cannot take with the queen uh, because of bishop to e5 and now the game is simply over you cannot protect anymore your knight if you move the knight you get checkmated on g7 so that's why after move knight to d7 we have now queen to f3 here the point is that you cannot even take that's uh that's the most important thing to recognize bishop to e5 still it would be probably a slightly better position for white but actually it's not working immediately you see bishop to e5 leads into this one knight to e5 
okay you can take queen takes e5 queen takes e5 rook to e5 but now with f6 you get the fork and you have to step back with your rook and we can take out the knight okay probably this is again a better position for white because uh, we can take also the pawn on g6 in a couple more moves the g the b7 is weak we can play rook to b5 so there are many many possibilities but i think this is an unsure win for white white has a better move which of course lila c0 played played queen to f3 so lila c0 didn't take out the bishop lila c0 simply attacked the pawn on f7 this is practicing now queen to f7 and of course then followed with queen to h7 after king to h8 it would be a checkmate but here of course um f5 was played by uh, this other engine still plays and now what comes the brilliant move that lila c0 has prepared here it's the move bishop to f5 really really sick brutal stuff so so far lila c0 has sacrificed the rook for the exchange and lila c0 sacrifices another piece bishop to f5 let's see now possible continuations for instance if you try bishop to c3 to undermine the pressure the problem is now this one bishop to e6 and uh, if you take rook to e6 as we said queen to f7 and then queen to h7 is checkmate if you try something like <laughs> rook to f8 in order to counterplay here on the f file again it's not better because rook to e5 first happens knight to e5 and now again this one bishop to e6 you have to move your king but the problem is now you get simply pinned with queen to e4 uh here the problem is you lose uh, probably the knight on e5 so it's again a completely winning game for uh for white you could also try here g takes f5 uh, but again it's not working because you lose then the pawn on h5 and th there's not a good way here to defend this position anymore so that's why after move bishop to f5 uh here um this other engine to flees to put the pawn e takes f5 but the problem about this uh, move is that the queen is coming with the check and now after move king to h8 we have a rook to e5 lila c0 is sacrificing a new rook for the exchange but now after move knight to e5 we have knight to e6 cutting off of course the connection between uh, between the rook and the queen so here in the continuation rook to e6 has to be played and now after move queen to e6 we have reached now this position in which of course lila c0 is threatening now to move bishop to e5 there are again several moves what you can do you can play maybe king to h7 but the problem is now after bishop to e5 there is not a good square to escape with the queen you have to uh, uh, you have to st step back with the queen and then probably queen to f7 is happening and it's game over so you could also try rook to g8 but as we said bishop to e5 uh here is again winning the game or you could also try bishop to c6 but again it's not working because bishop to e5 king to h7 and now you get one check and now after move king to h6 you get queen to g7 again leads into checkmate so that's why after move queen to e6 there is not uh, so many that uh, so uh, th there's not so much that the black can do of course uh the only way to protect this position is to play rook j5 so of course what black is hoping for here always is that white takes and then of course okay uh this would be uh, a playable position of course for black black is winning this game for sure because now the knight is protecting and white doesn't have any more their dark square bishop but uh the problem is now after move rook to a5 lila c0 uh found of course a beautiful tactics lila c0 takes simply first uh the pawn on g6 still the knight is pinned really really wild stuff and now we can also try to take out this pawn so it's a weird weird game i'm not sure as i said how to explain it but these are really brutal calculations by lila c0 so it i think i'm not sure from from which point uh the tactical sequence actually began for lila c0 but this is really wild uh we never see i think this kind of games where now the bishop is basically holding the pole position and the queen is used just in order Order to deliver some checks and grab some pawns so now the queen gets greedy and there is not so much that as i said black can do in this weird position so here b6 so what um the stuflet is trying to do is at least to somehow liber liberate the queen and stay with this rook on on a5 so what the uh, stuflet is trying to do is keep the pieces somehow compact so we have now queen to h5 king to g8 again a new check uh here by lila c0 we have queen to g7 and now after king to d8 we have queen to f8 here uh still place is covering but now queen to b6 again uh lila c0 simply takes another pawn so really really wild stuff so after move uh rook to uh, c5 was played and now bishop to b4 pinning the rook and after knight to uh knight to d3 finally queen to g6 we have queen to g7 queen takes g7 king to g7 and after bishop to 
c5 we have reached now really really well position knight to c5 and believe me or not this is winning for white although uh, black is now the the knight and two pawns against six pawns of white but the problem is now that there are simply uh, too many pass pawns and the problem is they're simply too far away from from each other the position gets simply too stretched and uh, i think uh, white can simply use the king in order to support the spawn progress so as i said this knight is simply stuck here on this side of the board the, the king is of course stuck on this side of the board so we have king to f1 knight to e4 king to g2 king to f6 f3 kicking with the knight and now knight to d6 c5 we have a knight to c4 and now very important move c6 because the move c6 is not allowing uh here this to place engine to take the pawn on b2 if that happens uh, in a good way for black then suddenly black is i think a decent position but the problem is now of course c7 and uh, the king cannot catch catch up anymore uh with the pawn so after move c4 c6 uh, the king has to march here towards the pawn but now you see the position gets simply too stretched for black uh h5 creates now of course uh new threats for for black we we have king to d6 we have h6 and now the knight has to move in order to protect the h6 we have with h7 knight to g6 king to f2 and now after king to e3 king to d5 and we have now this move king to d3 again new position the knight is simply stuck to the defense of the promotion of an h8 and now uh whatever white does white can always create of course here a pass one white can create also here a new pass pawn so it's completely completely winning for white so knight to h8 king to c3 king to c5 b3 uh, king takes b3 and you see now uh, here white is simply pushing this pawn creates now a new pawn again deflecting the queen from the action simply the king is now again too far away the king is now on the queen side king to e4 king to b6 king to f5 uh, here if you try knight to h8 then even g5 g6 uh, g7 is of course possibility so it's not working here in the continuation we had knight to e7 king to f4 we have king to a6 king to g5 and now a new promotion here check uh, lila c0 took and of course march with the king and deliver checkmate on b7 so foo, what to say I'm not sure, really, really wild game, brutal, brutal stuff by Lila C0. First, Lila C0 sacrificed the rook for the exchange, then uh, Lila C0 sacrificed the bishop for pawn, and then Lila C0 sacrificed uh, again a new rook for the minor piece, and then stretched the position all over the board. Really, really brutal, brutal attack by Lila C0. So, okay, I hope that you enjoyed the game. I really, really enjoyed it a lot. Uh, if you want to see more attacking games like this, check out my coverage of some commented chess games played by computers. Here's the link of our series and if you want to see also some brutal human games check out my best chat games of all time series with also some beautiful games from the past and if you like this content don't forget to subscribe to my channel see you soon with some more videos and chess is the best of course